What's going on, gang? It's Glendon Cameron again with the Corporate Citizen, where I teach you guys how to start companies. And today's topic is a very important one. Why I will never, ever start a business strictly for money and why you shouldn't either. So I want you guys to listen to me. And this is in response to many of the comments that were what I'm going to call assumers. What do I mean assumers? Uh, everyone who is in the actually in the car rental business tends to agree with mostly what I say because they're actually experiencing. And I got a comment. Hey, give people what they want. Go ahead and get an electric vehicle and finance it at 3.5%. And my response wasn't my typical cranky hustler response. No, no, no. I was like, you know what? Do this. You take your money and you go or your credit and you get a Tesla and put it on a platform and report back to me. First time I've really come at it from that standpoint, because a lot of you guys who are not renting cars have no clue to what you're talking about. You're just talking out your ass. I mean, seriously, because you're not renting cars. Everyone who's renting cars for real tends to agree with me. And if you've noticed, since I started putting my more realistic videos on YouTube, all of a sudden there's a lot more realistic videos about the car rental business. So let's talk about why I will never start a business for money. Years and years ago, this channel was about storage auctions. And I was a founding father of the reseller community here on YouTube. I was one of the original people. Everybody knew who I was. Everyone knew I did storage auctions. Everyone knew about my books. And something happened. Because as I started to get more famous, as I started to make more money, the hate became epic. I mean, this is one of the things that has kind of started happening again, is people would make fake YouTube channels to diss, to discourage, to get into arguments with people who were supporting me in the comments. And then one point, I remember one night they were having a three hour hangout about me, talking about how I shouldn't be charging for information and how I should give it freely. and something happened. I used to absolutely love resale. I used to love buying storage auctions, uh, units. I used to love rambling through them. I used to love putting an item on YouTube, on eBay for a dollar and it sells for $500. I used to love that. I used to love it. And due to all of the hate, I began to hate the reseller community. I thought they were some narrow minded, cheap, jealous ass bitches. And I was just like, so one day I was like, you know what? I had a Facebook group, rather large Facebook group, 2,500 members. I just gave it to Morris. I was like, hey, you can have this Facebook group. I'm out. I literally took my ball and went home and I started doing business only content and I stopped doing storage auction content. See, one of the things that I am happy to say is I will never suffer a business that I don't like because of the money. I'm just not going to do it because, you know, I've almost died twice. And I, the first time I almost died, I started looking at life totally differently. And I was like, one of my mandates was to have a lot of fun. Hence, which is where the Craigslist protocols came into it and why I kind of went buck wild with that. But with this Toro thing, I genuinely don't like Toro. I didn't like the communication. I didn't like the Toro renters. There was a few, this one dude who rented the Mercedes four times. He was classy. We had good conversation. I liked him. And there was a family that I rented to. They went up to a law camp. They had cute little kids. I liked them. But I didn't like the whole, I'm going to rent the Mercedes on Thursday and I'm going to leave early, ridiculously early on Sunday because you got to check the car in Sunday. I, I didn't like that. I just didn't like the whole the chattiness, the communication I am looking forward to driving your, I, I just didn't like that. I, I'm just, and you know, there are many of you who are looking at the money. 
And I actually don't think the money's going to be there in six to 12 months. My honest opinion. That's one of the reasons that I'm bailing now. Now, let's compare and contrast Toro to Hire Car. Hire Car, I actually like my renters. Uh, there was this one dude, his name was Rodriguez. Cool ass name. He had a cute little wife, cute little couple. We actually had a nice conversation. I like when an Uber driver shows up with their go bag because this is like someone serious. I actually like my hire car renters, not the yard birds, not the yard birds, not the people who rent my cars and sell them on Craigslist, not the people who keep my cars and refuse to bring them back. No, I don't like those folks. But overall, I have a affinity for my hard car renters. I actually like them. And I like buying cars. You know, it can be addictive buying cars because, you know, uh, I don't think I ever would have bought a Mercedes product if I didn't buy this Mercedes for Toro. And I actually like this car quite a bit. It's very fast. It's right up there with my X5. It's a stylish car and I actually like it. So I like buying cars. I like my hard car renters. I appreciate my renters and I will never ever get into a business that I don't like. I'm just life's too damn short to be doing that. And a lot of you, once again, uh, the people who are actually renting cars typically agree with me because they're going through it. I've seen comment after comment, like, man, I ran my car, my first rental, my car was totaled. I've seen comment after comment. And there are many of you who have assumptions. And I'm not gonna say you guys are stupid because just like you had assumptions, I had assumptions. I had assumptions when I got in the car business. I was like, you know, I think that this is gonna be cool. And once I exposed my assumptions to the marketplace, I found out that these assumptions were dead ass wrong. Like, I, I really thought that buying Camrys and Acras and Toyotas was gonna be the way to go. And what I found out that I can have a Toyota, it will literally sit three days, a week or two, before someone rents it. And I buy a BMW, I can buy a BMW on Tuesday, <laughs> put it on there Tuesday night, Wednesday, that sucker's gone. And once again, I've learned a lot so if you like, hey, once again, let's go ahead and make this deal. If you feel that Toro is the best thing ever, I want you to risk your credit, risk your money and start putting cars on Toro and report back to me how I'm wrong. That's going to be a different conversation because what you're going to find out, because this is something Toro, I picked up on this two months ago and Lucky at Automotive Life confirmed it, that Toro was pushing traffic to his older, more established hosts. Because I would see someone with a bunch of trips and I would see they, they got on the platform in 2015, they got on the platform in 2016. I consistently saw that, that the older hosts were the ones that were getting all of the new business. I consistently saw that. And then like I entered when Toro was pushing traffic to newer hosts. And then they went back because I'm, I, I know exactly what happened. Right now, I'm gonna say with great deal of confidence that 90% of the people on Toro are not professionals. They don't take care of their cars. They don't run them out with a full tank of gas. And Toro started seeing a lot of complaints, a lot of complaints. And now they're like, we're gonna push business to the people who make us look good. Makes sense makes a lot of sense. So I want you to go ahead and go out and buy a Tesla. I, I am not a fan of electric cars. I know a lot of people love them. And I will say I've never driven one. I just love like my 911. When I crank that bad boy up, there's the exhaust. And when I put it in sports mode, it's zoom. There, sometimes I just ride around with it, with the radio off because I listen to the engine. I love that performance of that 911. I love the performance of my X5M. And I like the performance of the drop top Mercedes. That, that car will get up. I really enjoy that. 
So I am not a convert to electric just yet. Maybe 10 years from now, I'll have a few electric cars. I don't know. But at the moment, I am not going to spend 40 to 100K for a car to rent. Now, I know someone that sells a bunch of Teslas and they sell them between 30 and $50,000. And once again, looking at the day rate, 120 bucks, that's typically what Teslas are going for here in Atlanta. So even if you rent them out for 30 days straight, that's 3,600 bucks. And it would, if, if you could, now I already know, cause I've checked, I've checked literally. There's a few people I went on Toro and it's real time consuming because what you have to do is put in the date that you want to rent the car and then see what shows up and try to rent it and do this for every day of the month. And I saw that there were several Teslas that were available for 30 days straight, which means they're not going out. And uh, someone put in courtesy, someone who's been on the Toro platform since 2016, they've been on Toro five years and they're deeply entrenched. And once again, they've got like a million dollars worth of inventory, probably $1.5 million worth of inventory in three different states. And this just screams partnerships. I don't think it's just courtesy. I think courtesy has multiple partners. He has a lot of stuff that's going on. They're open from seven to 10 PM. So he is a full fledged business person. And I feel that even though Curtis M has been on Curtis, Curtis M, I think has been on the platform for a long time. I feel that this slowdown is going to impact him if he's over leveraged. I don't know what his financials are. I don't know if he's paid cash for cars. I don't know where he is, but if he's over leveraged, this slowdown is going to impact him and it's not in a very good way. So, you know, I appreciate your comments, but, I want informed comments. I want you to go out and risk some damn money and then talk to me then. Because it's easy to be over here on the sidelines saying, I have these assumptions and I feel that these assumptions are valid. If you feel that they're so valid, why don't you have any money at play? Why don't you have any money at risk? Since they're so valid and you feel so strongly, how come you have not put any money on it. You know, that, that song like put a ring on it. How come you ain't put a hundred on it? How come you ain't got no money invested in it? How come you're not doing it? Since you, you feel your assumptions are so good or so valid. And that's my challenge to you. Don't talk to me about an assumption because I can tell with a great degree of accuracy that you're not renting cars. Um, someone put in the comment, you know, I'm going to finance cars and this, this is what he put in the comments. And I started laughing. He's like, I'm going to require a 30 day rental. I started laughing right now. I have a rent to own program and you know, one of the requirements is you have to rent the car for seven days to get into the program. Guess how many I've had this program going on for three weeks. Guess how many people I've had signed up zero. That's a seven day rental, a seven day rental. So if you come on the platform saying to rent this car, you must rent it for 30 days. <laughs> you ain't going to get very far. Uh, the average rental period is two to three days and they just keep extending and keep extending. So this is how I knew that it was someone who wasn't renting cars and didn't know what they were talking about. And I guarantee you, if this person goes ahead and finances a bunch of cars, um, it's not going to go well is not going to go well because one of the reasons that I pay cash and I feel really comfortable because like right now I have three cars that are wrecked and I just looked at that as parked money. I don't have to worry about making payments. Um, I'm just like, okay, I called USA today. They already knew about it. I had to provide some information. So I feel that that car is going to be repaired pretty quickly. And then I've got another car. I got to check on the claim. I feel they're going to total that one out. Then I have another car that was wrecked, but it's drivable. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and have my assistant drive it for 200 miles, and then have my mechanic turn the check engine light off and take it down and get emissions and get a tag and rent that bad boy out for 25 bucks a day. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get it out the mud 
because uh, one of the reasons that I've paused on buying cars is I need to realign my fleet. And I have a really good sense of what really rents well because I don't care what you buy if it doesn't go out. You're not making any money if it's sitting in your parking lot. You're not making any money. And last month, I made $21,500 with 15 cars being consistently rented out. So I'm trying to move it up where I can get 25, 28 cars consistently. I want to drive to my office and see no cars in the parking lot. That's what I'm going to work on this month in October. I'm going to start buying cars again in November. And right now I'm working out the kinks. I'm working on my business. I'm getting stuff fixed. I'm getting GPS kill switches and everything. So this is a moment to reevaluate my business and also to like, like I said, I am never going to get into a business that I don't like. I'm just not because of money, you know, and I feel good that I'm in the position that I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. I know that's a lofty, uh, big position. I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. Like today I was sitting down, I was thinking like for the people in the corporate papers, Tonight, I'm going to give you access to the disruptive mail. Uh, you know, today, uh, today was very manageable because the car rental business is becoming very manageable because I'm learning how to manage it. So I've been home since like four o'clock and I'm making videos and stuff and talking to you guys. But once again, you should never, ever get into a business strictly because of money. Because if you don't like it, it's going to wear on you. It's going to wear on you. Just like I made a million five selling my storage auction book. And I walked away from that community because I hated that community. There's a few people I'm still cool with, but for the most part, I'm like, fuck them. I don't like them. I don't like these little pointy head, narrow minded. I, I don't like them. And that's how I get down. I am never going to do a business that I don't like because I need to make some money. There's too many things that I like. I like YouTube. I really like YouTube. I like writing. I like creating content. I love teaching. I love training. I am doing what I want to do. And I advise you to do what you like to do because in every business, there is a segment that is unsavory. There's a segment that you're not going to like. There's a part of the business that's going to be very unattractive. And if you've got a part of the business that you really, really like, um, it's going to carry you over that unsavory part. But once again, a lot of you guys, like I said, this is the challenge. Let's, well, I can't really can't throw it on, throw them this challenge. So you think that Toro is great. All right, go ahead and invest your credit and money in Toro and report back to me. Actually start a YouTube channel and talking about your Toro experience. There is a guy who puts out really good Toro content and he don't get the views. I've noticed this, that there's a lot of people who are putting out Toro content and they're not getting any views. They're not getting any views. I'm like, this guy, he will put up a good video and get like two, 300 views. And it's, it, it's the, this, the multiplier guy. It's the multiplier. He's an Asian guy. Uh, he's in Vegas. He's in California. And I'm just sitting there like, why is this guy getting more views? It's kind of funny, but once again, if you feel that your thesis, that your assumption about Toro is correct, how come you have not spent any money? Please answer that question in the comments. Please let me know why you have not spent a dime, why you don't have at least three cars on the rental platform. Please tell me, please tell me. Because it's one thing to sit up in the peanut gallery and like come up with these assumptions and these comments and you have no skin in the game, none whatsoever. That right there to me is hilarious. So go ahead, put some skin in the game, 
get in the business, and let's see how well you do. Because using someone who's been on the Toro platform, if you know anything about Toro, Toro is pushing traffic to its older, more established host because they make Toro look good. So if you want to compare that against someone brand new, all right, that would be an unfair comparison. And also, one of the things, I guarantee you that Curtis has a, a big dog investor in his back pocket. I guarantee you he is not doing this on his personal credit. I know that. There is no way that you can buy 150 cars on your personal credit. Ain't happening. So he probably has an LLC. He probably has a line of credit and some other stuff. And it seems like he has a business model that works for him. But if you scroll through all the cars, you will see there's a lot of cars with very few trips. And um, I, 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 that's one of the things like that when the Mercedes was hot, I did like 22 trips for the Mercedes and then it just stopped, just stopped, it just stopped. So I, like I said, I'm not a fan of Toro. I'm not a big fan of it and I'm out. I don't care what you guys say. I've left it. I've took my ball. I went home and I'm just going to sit here and watch y'all. Please go on Toro, risk your money, finance a car, knock yourself out. Knock yourself out financing the car and throwing it on Toro. And I hope it works out well for you. But based upon my marketplace analysis, six months to 12 months from now, Toro's going to be a shit show. But once again, you go ahead and you jump in the boiling water, boy. You jump in that boiling water. Go ahead. Go ahead. Be like the frog in the boiling pot of water that slowly gets boiled because he doesn't realize it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Um, and this is something lucky at Automotive Life. He and I b b agree 100% on this, that going forward, Toro's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And like higher car, I don't see a slowdown. And I'm going to tell you why I don't see a slowdown on higher car. Because a lot of people right now want to make money in a sexy, crazy, cool way. Right now, Toro is sexy and cool. It's hip. It's hot. Hey, oh yeah, I got some cars on Toro. Oh really? Yeah. Are you doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing really well. Higher car. Higher car doesn't have that image right now. Higher car is more of a blue collar, everyday working man. So once again, you know, and lucky he was talking about people want to rent out the Ferraris and the Porsches and stuff. And I got caught up a little bit because um, I'm going to tell you my plan. I am going to rent the Porsche out for five months. I've lowered the price. I've already put it on there. And once I've gotten to a point where I can get rid of it, I'm getting rid of it and I'm going to get two more regular cars. Unless it just starts renting out really well. And also something else. I've changed. And this is one of the things you have to be flexible. My first uh, part of the business was I was going to have the cars for a year and then I moved it to two years. Now I'm going to rent these cars for three years. And I'm going to tell you why that first year I'm just getting my money back. And then the second year will be profit and the third year will be profit. And the third year, that's when I will sell the car. Cause at that point I can sell it for whatever. And that is profit. So now I'm on a three year plan. And this is something that's come to me because I've been doing this and I was like, okay, and I've been looking at it because uh, there's a lot of cars I got that will easily survive three years. There are some I'm a little concerned about, but we will see because let's take one car that I spent 7,200 bucks for. And this car has already made about 1,500. And I've had to put new tires on it. No, I, not on this car. I had to put new tires. Yeah, so I, this is the car that the girl flattened the tire. So that was $900 between the tires and the toe. And the starter went out, so that was a thousand bucks. So we went from 7,200 to 8,200. We went to 9,200. Cars made 15. And if this car holds up, once again, I don't know. I don't know. It's the oldest car I have in my fleet. If it holds up, because once, this is the thing with BMWs, once you fix a few things, they pretty much are good to go after you fix a few things. They can be finicky and stuff. But um, 
if that car is 92, I'm 9,200 bucks into it. So with 1,500, that brings me down to 82, 7,400. That brings me down like 7,700. So let's say this year it rents out and I make my $7,000 back. And then next year it rents out and it makes 8,000. And then the next year after that it rents out and makes another 8,000. So that's 16,000, then I sell it for 4,000. Just because you know, at this point I'm gonna sell them real cheap because I can sell them real cheap. I can sell them real cheap. So after three years, I can sell all these cars dirt cheap and still make money, still make money. So that's the plan because um, once again, I was all in a hurry to do this and you know, turn it over every year and everything. And the reality of the business started to slap me upside the head. It's like, boy, you can't do it that way. It ain't gonna work that way. So I enjoy hire car. I enjoy my hire car renters. Toro renters, not so much. Most of them, most of them were getting on my nerves. And uh, that's, one, that's another reason I'm out. I'm out, but once again, if you feel, if you feel that you can do really better on Toro and you can make more money, knock yourself out. Because I am through arguing with people on the internet like years and years ago. No eBay, no Amazon. There was four or five videos I put up talking about what was gonna happen in the Amazon FBA and it happened. And once again, many of you are like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and throw my money in the Toro fire. Knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. Enjoy yourself, young man. Enjoy yourself. Because once again, in the corporate papers, because uh, another thing I'm getting ready to do is a service business module. Because probably in October, I'm gonna start a credit repair agency. And someone was like, isn't credit repair legal in Georgia? I was like, so is speeding and people do it every day. I'm like, there's a legal, there's a legal, and there's a legal illegal. Like I said, I, I, I will figure a way around that. So I'm gonna start a credit repair agency, and this is what the new person I'm gonna hire, because they're gonna rent out cars during the day, and then they're gonna work on credit repair when they're not renting out cars, because renting out cars, the management of the fleet is more intensive than actually renting out the car. Keeping up with the oil changes, keeping up with the maintenance, keeping up with the cars washed, uh, tires. One of the things is that I've been buying a lot of tires because with these used cars, people are like, hey, I'm getting ready to trade this. I don't care about this car anymore. So uh, I'm doing tires, I'm doing oil changes, I'm doing belts. And I feel in October, I'm virtually not gonna have any repairs because I'm fixing everything now. And, um, one of the things that I got to do is I got two cars that are out that don't have GPS kill switches. And one of them, when I get it back, I'm going to put a GPS kill switch in it. The Acura that's being fixed, the one that was left on the side of the road, I'm putting the GPS kill switch in it. And another thing I've, I've seen with my business is the people who rent from me the most live Jonesboro, Riverdale, uh, Stockbridge. They, they're on the other side of the world, Stone Mountain. I'm just sitting there like, what is going on? Uh, I get excited when someone rents from me who's local. I get real excited. But yeah, we're getting ready to start. Um, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm changing up the content. Uh, the Apex Predator thing, I'm going to focus on teaching and training. If you want to be seduced by someone that's full of crap, that's lying to you, knock yourself out. Enjoy yourself. Wallow in it, because you want to know how you are seduced. What did I start off this video with? Most of you are not practitioners. This is why you're leaving these comments, these assumptions, because you're not actually doing it. You don't really know what you're talking about. And I'm not being mean or dismissive, I'm being honest. Like when I saw that content comment, yeah, I'm gonna require, when I saw that comment that I'm gonna require a 30 day rental, I started chuckling. You know, right now I have a rent to buy own, rent to own program where you must 
rent from me for six to eight months and you must do a seven day rental. And I've had this going on for three weeks. And you know how many people have signed up for it? Zero. So <laughs> you go ahead and start requiring people to have a 30 day rental to rent your car. They're going to sit. They're going to sit. And honestly, based upon the marketplace, I'm probably going to have to get off of that and change that up. I'm probably going to have to change that up because um, one of the things that is happening is the realities of the marketplace are starting to penetrate. I mean, it's like there's just like you, I had assumptions. I felt that certain things were going to work and I found out that these assumptions were, they could, not, could not stand under the weight of reality. They just couldn't. So what I'm getting ready to do is to give the marketplace what it wants because once again, the marketplace don't care. Marketplace like the honey badger don't care. The honey badger don't care. They just do what they want to do. Also, once again, if you feel that Toro is the best thing ever, go ahead and pull the car on there and see what happens. Go ahead. I dare you. So it's easy to sit on the sidelines and do that, but to be a practitioner, and this is why so many of you guys get fooled, is because you're not practitioners. This is why someone, like someone came here on YouTube talking about, well, you know, if what they were saying was illegal, they would be sued. These guys are coming on YouTube and they're telling you tactics. They're not selling a product. If they sold you a product, and you bought it and found out that the product didn't work, yes, they can get sued, but they're not selling the product. They're just putting out garbage information to get views on YouTube. You know, I'm just sitting there like once again, but once, it, you know, so many people don't know what they don't know. And that, that is a big, big deal. But once again, guys, go below, get in the corporate papers where I'm going to teach you what I've been doing. Once again, I've been spending the last four months, this is my fifth month, and I feel, I find that, I, I, feel, I finally have a firm grasp on what works and what doesn't work. And now that I'm getting rid of Toro, and I can focus on higher car, I have a feeling that higher car is about to blossom. And one of the things that I've done is you've got to run tiny experiments because once again, I remember what I'm saying, a lot of people were not telling the truth about the rental car business. And once I start putting my real videos on there, a lot of other people start putting more realistic videos up there. Go figure. So I'm going to teach you how to set up a holding company. I'm going to teach you how to set up an operating company. And I'm going to teach you more importantly, how to get customers. Cause uh, I'm getting ready to set up a credit repair agency. I think I'm going to call it the agency. And, uh, there's a way around it because you know credit repair is legal in Georgia <laughs> yeah so speeding and people do it every damn day so go below get into the corporate papers uh, tonight or tomorrow I'm going to give access to everyone to disruptive mail plus I'm going to put some other stuff in there that's going to be juicy it's going to be so juicy so just get ready for that but the link's below, use promo code AUGUST, get in the corporate papers, and I will see you guys in the next one.